Okay, so as I said, today we're today, Tuesday, April 20th. Um, we'll go through notes. We're going to talk about uh, solubility and rate of dissolution. So solubility is how much you can dissolve. Rate of dissolution is how fast or slow something will dissolve. So they are different things. And we're going to talk about them today. And we're going to talk about how you can affect them. So how can you make more or less of something dissolve? And how can you make something dissolve faster or slower um, in water? So that's what our focus is on today. Um, on Thursday, you're going to have a little Thursday and then next Monday, you are going to be things that are going to involve a little bit of calculations. It's not very difficult. It's just one formula, uh, each day that you're going to have to practice doing calculations with, um, Thursday, you're, we're talking about concentration and the, um, unit that we use for concentration is called molarity. So that's why it says molarity here, um, because it's the number of moles of something dissolved in a liter of solution. And then on Monday next week, um, the last part of the unit is dilutions. So that's like if I have a solution that's this a certain concentration, but I want it to be less concentrated, then I'm going to add some water to it. And so there's actually a um, equation we use to calculate like how much water do we need to add or what will the new concentration be? So there's different things you can solve for. Um, and so both of those, there are some uh, notes and then some practice questions involving the equations, the calculations. So I've already seen a couple of people that were working like yesterday and this morning, and they've already done, you know, all three lessons they've done today, Thursday and next Monday already. So if you want to work ahead, you can, if you have extra time and you're caught up in all your classes, um, that's why I went ahead and posted everything for the week. since we're not going to have live class uh, together on Thursday. Um, and then also since we're finishing up the unit next week, I went ahead and posted the dilutions uh, lessons. So if you wanted to get ahead. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, that means next Wednesday, which would be April 28th, your test will be posted here for you to complete. Okay. So today we are looking at solubility and rate of dissolution. Sometimes you hear it called rate of solution or rate of dissolving instead of rate of dissolution. So just be aware that there are like a couple different terms that it may be written as. Um, but we're going to talk about how much you can dissolve of something and how fast or slow something will dissolve and how we can affect those. So at the beginning here, you can see this little um, animated image and there's a solution in this flask and you can see, it looks like there's like little crystals forming. So this is actually what we call a super saturated solution. And that's one of the terms we're gonna talk about today. Um, if something is saturated, that means that you have dissolved all of the solute you can, the maximum amount and there they go. All right, so, um, before our interruption, I was talking about how um, this uh, little animated image is showing us a, a super saturated solution. So we're gonna talk about three different types of solutions today based on their solubility. Um, so if something's unsaturated, you can dissolve more of the solute. If it's saturated, you, you've already reached the maximum amount of, amount of solute that you can dissolve. And if it's super saturated, that's a kind of an unstable form where you technically have more dissolved than you should be able to. And so what happens is usually you get super saturated solutions when you heat up um, the water to a very high temperature um, and you dissolve a lot of something in it. And then as it cools down, you'll see crystals like this start to form in it, uh, either as it cools down or if it's like agitated, like if you hit it at all, um, or if you add like a little solid crystal in it, you'll see more crystals start to form. And so that's how they make things like um, um, that hard, like rock candy, like that looks like crystals. They make it through a process like this where they heat water up to a very, very high temperature. They put a lot of sugar in it and then they'll add like, you know, food coloring or maybe a flavoring if it's going to be flavored something. Um, and then as it cools down, um, the crystals will start to form. Uh, they'll usually put, you know, like a stick or a piece of string in it and the crystals will form on the stick or the piece of string. And then eventually they'll end up with um, a, a whole thing of like rock candy where it looks like little crystals. Okay, so solubility is the maximum amount of a solute that dissolves at a specific temperature, okay? Um, that means that if you wanna to try to dissolve more, you're gonna to have to change the temperature. You're gonna to have to increase it or decrease it depending on if it's a solid or a gas. So I kind of already introduced these three terms. Saturated means that you have dissolved the maximum amount of solute at that temperature. So you won't be able to dissolve anymore at that temperature. 
Unsaturated means that you have not yet reached the maximum amount. So you might be able to add more of it and it'll still dissolve at that temperature. And then super saturated is the one where you technically have more than the maximum amount dissolved at that temperature. And as I said, it's really unstable. So typically it, it'll be at a higher temperature and as it cools down, um, it becomes super saturated and you either see crystals start to form in it, um, especially if you've put like a piece of string or a stick or something in the solution um, that will allow the crystals to kind of form on it um, as you saw in that little uh, animated image. So here's an unsaturated solution. So I can see that I'm adding more solute and it's, you know, everything's dissolved here. Um, saturated, I'm adding more, but it's not dissolving. It's just kind of sinking to the bottom. So, you know, if you try to stir and it's still nothing dissolves and it just kind of sinks to the bottom, that's how you can tell that your solution is saturated and it's not going to dissolve any more of whatever you're trying to dissolve. Super saturated, you're adding more and, um, it, it might dissolve at first, but then you start to see the little crystals forming in the solution, okay? And so this is just showing you that each one of these images is showing sort of an example of, of each type of solution. So we can actually create a graph showing the solubility of a solution. And so this is sort of showing you the general setup of what the graph would look like. Um, it's, some, it's called a solubility graph, or sometimes you hear it called a solubility curve. And so on the x-axis down here, you always have temperature. And so that'll be uh, in degrees Celsius, okay? It won't be in Fahrenheit. Um, and then over here on the y-axis, it says the solute, so the grass or the, the grams um, per, per 100 grams of water. So this is like the mass of your solute that you can dissolve in 100 grams of water. Now, sometimes it'll say 100 milliliters of water. That doesn't really matter as long as it's still 100, okay? Um, and then on the graph, the areas that you need to kind of be aware of is you'll see lines, you'll see curves like this, and the curves will be labeled for different substances, different solutes. If you are trying to figure out if something is saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated, you're gonna kind of look at it in relation to the curve for that substance. So for example, if I were to go over to like to this temperature and then go up, if I hit the line, then that means that it's saturated. So anytime you hit on the curve itself, um, that's the saturation line. And so if I have a point and it lands on the curve, I would say that solution is saturated at that temperature. Um, if I trace over the temperature and I go up and the point is below the curve, anytime you're below the curve, then you're considered unsaturated at that temperature. Uh, same thing, if I go over and I trace up and my point ends up above the curve, then that means that I would be super saturated at that temperature. So depending on what area you hit in, you should be able to identify if a substance is unsaturated, saturated, or super saturated if you're given a certain temperature. And all you would do again is you would find the temperature on the x-axis, you would trace up to where the number of grams that you were given is, and wherever that point hits, whether it's above, below, or on the line, will tell you which of the three types that it will be, okay? Um, there is another, there's a video in here about how to read solubility curves where it goes into a little bit more detail. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to watch that because they're gonna show you this actual graph where you can see there's several curves here kind of on the little image that's on the um, beginning of the video. And so this is what solubility curves usually look like. There'll be multiple lines and each one will be labeled with whatever the substance is that is being dissolved in the water. And so you can see that some of the lines are going up, like this orange one's going up, this one that's NaNO3 is going up, um, but then there's some, these three blue ones are going down. Um, that has to do with if they're solids or gases. All the lines curving upward are gonna be solids. Anything curving downward is gonna be a gas because gases dissolve better at lower temperatures solids dissolve better at higher temperatures, okay? Um, and so make sure that you kind of read through that just or watch through this just so that you sort of um, see those examples in a little bit more detail. So this one, now we're gonna look at one. So there's some hot spots on here. So there's these little plus signs that you can click on. Um, so this is an actual solubility curve. So I can see down here, there's temperature in degrees Celsius and it goes from zero to 100. On the y-axis, I have grams of solute per 100 grams of water and it starts at zero and it goes up by tens all the way to 150 grams. And then I can see I have all these different lines. Now on this one, they're all in color. 
they may not always be in color. They might just be in black and white. And so, you know, make sure that you're able to kind of read the uh, areas. Um, so if I click right here, um, so if I dissolved 50 grams of NaCl at 10 degrees Celsius, the solution would be super saturated because the line or the point falls above the curve. So I'm looking for NaCl. That's this kind of dark brown line right here. And it kind of increases a little bit, but it doesn't go up that much. So this is table salt. So they gave me a temperature of 10 degrees. So I'm going to go over here to 10 degrees on the X axis. And then I'm going to go up to 50. So that's why this point is right here. And so at 10 degrees Celsius, if I dissolve 50 grams, here is my point where the little hot spot is. And it's above this dark brown line for NaCl. So if I tried to dissolve that many grams at that temperature, it would be super saturated because the curve or the line for NaCl is below it. Okay. Um, if I come here, so this temperature is 40 degrees. And if I go up, it looks like it's at about 20, maybe slightly below 20, maybe like 18 or 19. Um, so at this one, it says, according to the graph, at 40 degrees Celsius, a saturated solution of this substance, KClO3, which is potassium chlorate, would contain about 18 grams. So again, if I'm given 40 degrees and I want to know how many grams would be saturated for KClO3, I would trace up to the curve for KClO3 and then go over here to the y-axis. And it's a little bit below 20, so that's why we said about 18 grams. Um, so again, if you're looking for something saturated, you want to look at the curve at that temperature. If I change the temperature instead of 40, if I change it to 50 and I go up, now my point is here. So at 50 degrees for KClO3, saturated would maybe be like mm, 22, 23, because it's above the line for 20. If I go to 80 degrees and I go up to this line for KClO3, it's now over 40. It's maybe 42, 43. Okay. So whatever, if ever I want to know what's, what saturated is, I, fi I find the temperature they give me, go up, and then go to whichever curve. Now, if I wanted to do a different substance, let's say I'm still at 40 degrees, but instead of KClO3, maybe they want me to do this NH4Cl, this kind of dark purple one. If I go up here at 40 degrees and I trace over to the y-axis, it's not quite 50, so it's maybe like 46, 47. It's more than halfway between 40 and 50, so it can't be 45 but it might be like 47-ish, somewhere in there. So I could say it's approximately 47 grams uh, to get a saturated solution of NH4Cl. If I stay at 40 degrees, but I go up to this blue, this kind of turquoise blue line, which is K and O3. Um, for that one, if I go up, it's about here. If I trace over, it looks like it's maybe halfway between 60 and 70. It could be 64 or 65 maybe. Okay, it's a little hard to tell on this one. So we can kind of estimate our best guess. Um, the last one over here, this one is asking about NaNO3, which is this red line, okay? Uh, which is very, very soluble. So if I go over to 70 degrees and I trace up and I say, well, at 70 degrees, I'm gonna dissolve 90 grams of NaNO3. Um, so if I dissolve 90 grams of that substance at 70, that would be unsaturated because it's falling below the curve for NaNO3. NaNO3 at 70 degrees, it's all the way up here. For it to be saturated, I would have to dissolve like 135 grams or so, maybe 136, something like that, okay? So this is kind of how you interpret it. If you're given a temperature and you're asked like how much would I need to dissolve for it to be saturated, you find your temperature, you go up to whichever curve is for the substance you're asked about, and you find the where it would land on the curve and trace it over to the y-axis, that will tell you how many grams you can dissolve to make it saturated. If you're asked to identify is something, you know, saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated, um, they will usually give you a temperature and an amount. And so you'll go over to the x-axis for the temperature, the y-axis for the amount, and you'll trace up until you figure out what point they hit at. And then you compare it to where the line or the curve is for the substance that you're asked about. And if it's above super saturated, if it's below unsaturated, if it hits right on the curve at that temperature, then it would be saturated. So we have some practice questions down there. So I'm gonna do the first one together and then the other three you guys can do for your own practice later. So this says at 30 degrees Celsius, so that's our temperature for the x-axis, about how many grams of K and O3 would you need to dissolve to make a saturated solution? 
So they give us the temperature and they, we want us to make a saturated solution. And then the formula, the substance is KNO3, potassium nitrate. So if I go up here, potassium nitrate is this turquoisey um, blue one. So I'm looking at the blue line, the light blue line, and I need to look at 30 degrees Celsius. So here on my X axis is 30 degrees. I'm gonna go up because they wanna make a saturated solution. So I'm gonna go up until I hit the line uh, for that KNO3, which was this turquoisey blue. So 30 degrees go up and it hits, it's below 50. So it's not all the way to 50, almost 50. So if I look at my choices, which of these do you think would be the best answer based on where it hits? Forty-eight. 48 most likely because it was below 50 but 41 is too low so if I check and then that's the correct one and so then as you go through there's going to be some other questions so like this one says if I dissolve this much of this substance at this temperature is it will it will make a saturated solution so it's just asking you true or false so I would find the temperature and mass and then I would go up and find where that point hits on the graph and compare it to the curve for NH4Cl if it lands right on the curve for NH4Cl then it's true if it lands above or below, it's false because then it would either be unsaturated or supersaturated, depending on if it was above or below. All right, so the other part of, day of today is rate of dissolution or rate of dissolving. So solubility is how much of something we can dissolve. And so I'm gonna go back to Drew really quick. So most of these curves are going up. If you notice, there's a few going down. HCl is going down, NH3 is going down, and SO, I think that's a two, could be a three. Uh, those are the only three going down. If you see curves going downward as the temperature increases, those are gases. Because as you're gonna see in the little video, um, gases are dissolve better at cold temperatures. That's why soda tastes better when it's cold because there's more carbonation dissolved in the solution. When it gets hot, the gas escapes out and it goes flat. So at warmer temperatures, less gas dissolves. And so that's why you usually when you drink soda, you wanna drink it like right after you got it out of the fridge and opened it up because drinking, drinking it at a lower temperature is gonna make it taste better. And also drinking it right after you opened it and you just released the pressure, it's gonna taste better. Because over time, as it's exposed to the air and the pressure was released, the gas is going to escape out. Now you can slow it down by like putting your soda back in the fridge or maybe putting the lid back on the bottle and keeping it inside. But eventually because you've broken that seal and opened it, it's all going to escape. You can slow it down by putting the lid back on and you can slow it down by uh, cooling it down and leaving it in the fridge, but it will go flat eventually. Solids on the other hand, they dissolve better at higher temperatures. So like salt and sugar, if you think about like making like, if you drink hot coffee versus like cold co iced coffee, if you're trying to dissolve like sugar or something in your coffee, it's gonna, more of it's gonna dissolve better if it's hot coffee or hot tea versus if it's cold, okay? Um, so that's kind of the key difference here is that solids will always increase on this graph. The lines that go downward are gonna be gases because they're opposite in, in terms of how temperature affects them dissolving. Uh, all right, so the rate of dissolution is how fast or slow something will dissolve. So that's the key difference here. So make sure you know the difference between these terms. Solubility is how much, so the maximum amount you can dissolve at a specific temperature. Rate of dissolution is how fast or slow something dissolves. They can both be affected uh, by factors. Some of them are similar. Some of them are going to be different. So there's a little table here. If you're somebody who you just need the information and you're good, this table summarizes how um, these different things affect the dissolution rate. Notice this is only for a solid um, and how each of these things affects the solubility of a solid and a gas. So the purple area is solubility. That's how much of something we can dissolve. The blue is the dissolution rate. That's how fast or slow it will dissolve. And then below there is a video here. Um, if you're at school, the video, for some reason, AISD has it blocked. I don't know why. Um, so like if I click on it, it's not gonna play. Oh, it is gonna Hello? play. Okay, well, I don't know. Yesterday it wasn't playing for one of the other teachers and we thought that it was blocked here at school. But if you want to get a little more detail, if you're somebody who you like to hear it um, you know, auditorily um, or you wanna hear it in a little more detail, the video goes through um, this table. 
But what I want you to kind of take away is so heating the solution. So that's increasing the temperature. So we already saw on that solubility chart that as we heated it up, the solids increased, but the gases decreased. That's what I was just telling you that on that graph, you can tell which ones are solids and which ones are gases because the lines that go up on that graph are solids because the temperature is increasing and you're dissolving more of them. The lines that go downward are gases because as you're increasing the temperature, they're decreasing. There's less of them dissolving. Okay. Um, if you want to know how fast, uh, how it affects the, the rate of dissolution, if you heat the solution, it's going to dissolve faster. So think about, you know, trying to dissolve like the same amount of sugar in a cup of hot tea versus a cup of like iced tea. Um, they're, it's going to dissolve faster because the hotter something is, the more energy their particles have. And so it's going to dissolve that solute faster than something that's colder. So agitating, agitating is the fancy science word for like stirring or shaking something. So if you see agitation or stirring or shaking, that is all the same thing. That has no effect on solids for solubility. It doesn't matter how much you stir something. If you've reached the saturation point, it won't dissolve anymore, okay? The only way to affect the solubility of a solid is the temperature, okay? Um, it does, it decreases the solubility of a gas because if you stir it, if you agitate it, you're gonna get the gas bubbles that are gonna come out of solution fat, uh, more often. And so it's gonna decrease them dissolving. Um, for dissolving rate of a solid actually increases it. Cause again, if you think about if I have like two glasses of tea at the same temperature and I put the same, a spoonful of sugar in each and I stir one and I don't stir the other, the one I'm stirring is going to dissolve faster because I'm agitating it and I'm forcing the molecules to sort of come in contact uh, more quickly. Um, this next one is one that's confusing for some people. So increasing the surface area of a solute. So if you increase the surface area, that means you're exposing more of the uh, surface of the substance to the sol uh, solvent. And so a lot of times what we do is we crush or grind something up because the smaller the particles, the more surface area is exposed because they're kind of inverse. So if, if I, I want to increase how fast something dissolves, I'm going to crush or grind it up because really tiny particles are going to dissolve faster than large particles. So if I think of like, if I wanted to dissolve like a sugar cube versus granulated sugar, okay, the granulated sugar will dissolve faster because it's been crushed up. Um, if I wanna make it go even faster, I could do powdered sugar. Powdered sugar is gonna be even smaller than the granulated sugar. And so all of those are causing the surface area to increase, which is gonna make it dissolve faster. Notice that that has no effect on how much you can dissolve for both gases and solids. The last one is this increasing the pressure. The only thing pressure affects is gases, okay? Pressure doesn't affect solids and liquids. So on this last one, if I increase the pressure, I'm gonna dissolve more of a gas, okay? And that's what I was talking about, like when you put the lid back on your soda. So if you have something like a soda that has carbonation in it, it's under pressure. It's got a really high pressure. When you open the bottle, you always hear it go like, shh. That's because you're releasing the pressure. So as soon as you break the seal and you open it, it's now all those gas bubbles that you see come to the top, they're escaping out of the solution because you've lowered the pressure, okay? You can put the lid back on um, and keep it in there for a little bit longer, but because you have broken that seal and released that initial high pressure that it was under, it's gonna start coming out. The only way to get it to, to slow down is to cool it, put it in the fridge, um, or to um, um, put it back under pressure which is not really something we can do. You'd have to have, you know, some kind of machine to uh, pressurize it like they have in the factories where they make the cans and bottles of soda, okay? So that's kind of a summary. As I said, if you wanna get more detail, um, I would definitely watch the video. Um, if you're somebody who, it helps you to hear it a second time. Um, and then you have some practice questions under here uh, to answer about solubility and uh, rate of dissolution for the solids and gases, okay? Uh, when you're finished with the whole entire thing, you've made sure you've done all the practice questions, watched all the videos and all that good stuff. Um, on the last page, make sure that you submit report for your um, assignment grade for today. Um, and that is it for today. As I said, if you're somebody, like if you finish today's and you're caught up in your other classes and you wanna work ahead, um, you can go ahead and work on Thursday's lesson if you want to, it's already on here. Um, concentration of solutions or molarity. Um, and then the one for next Monday is also on here too. So 
Um, if you want to work ahead, feel free to do that once you finish today's lesson. Um, but once you finish today's lesson, if you have stuff for other classes you need to do, then um, work on that first. And then you can go work on this if you get done. Okay. All right.